hello, good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you. Becky, I'll turn it over to you before I give our official roundtable welcome. Yes, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining and for present on the call. You'll be taking questions at the end. So, but feel free to message me uh, with any questions that you have, and I am going to kick it off to Kim. Thanks so much. So hi all, my name is Kimberly Olson and I'm the Executive Director of the New York City Arts and Education Roundtable. Uh, we are so grateful and glad to have you all joining us today for the kickoff of our It Starts With The Arts Advocacy Campaign. Uh, for those of you that might be new to the roundtable, we are a grassroots service organization working to improve and advance arts education here in New York City through professional development, regranting, and advocacy. Now, although we are currently meeting on an online platform, the roundtable would like to acknowledge that we work and live on unceded lands. Manhattan, or the place that is widely known as New York City, exists on the contemporary and ancestral lands of the Canarsie, Lenape, Muncie, and Wappinger people. These sovereign nations and communities are still thriving here, and we continue to occupy their lands. We'd like to give a moment of respect to them before we begin today, as well as to the Black and immigrant communities which have helped us build the city we know. Thank you. As we recognize that all of our pasts and presents and futures are intertwined, uh, a member of the Roundtable staff will uh, lift up a few contemporary Indigenous organizations that we can all support and learn from in the chat as I continue with my introductory remarks. Uh, just a few Zoom points as well. If you're having trouble with Zoom, please feel free to send a message to a roundtable staff member, Kinsey Keck or Alex Latore. Um, we encourage you to use the chat as well to ask questions and to connect with other folks in the call. If you're joining us, please feel free to give a shout out, say hello, who you are, where you're Zooming in from. Uh, we love to see so many in our community here in support of arts education. Uh, a note on closed captioning, this call does include a live transcript feature. To activate the setting, please click live transcript at the bottom of your toolbar and select show subtitles. Additionally, this event is being recorded and will be made available on the Roundtable's website and YouTube channel. And with that, I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined today by so many familiar and new faces. Um, a huge thank you to our students that are joining us, Kay Daly, Fatimata, Karen, and Pascali, to the educators, artists, and arts education champions who are also joining us and will be speaking today, Gary Padmore, Director of Education and Community Engagement at the New York Philharmonic, also a Roundtable Board Co-Chair, Matthew Lee Erbal, uh, Artist and Director of Government Affairs, Public Policy and Communications at Be An Arts Hero, Chesare Dolfa, Artistic Director at Broadway Advocacy Coalition, and Regent Roger Tillis from the New York State Department of Education's Board of Regents. A huge thank you as well to Council Members Chi Osei and Majority Leader Keith Powers for also joining us. We are so entirely grateful for your support of our city's young people and for including funding for arts education in the City Council's budget response. Now, we are here today to send a clear message. It starts with the arts. Academic performance, mental health and well being, parent engagement, broader horizons, whole child education. The research is clear that it all starts with dance, theater, music, visual arts, media, and literacy arts. As an educator myself, who's worked in over 50 schools across New York City in every single borough, I know that the lessons learned in the arts classroom transcend the stage and the canvas. And as we transition into a post-pandemic world, arts education has never been more important for the educational, social, and mental health of our city's young people. And so that's why with our It Starts With The Arts campaign, we are calling on the city to guarantee $100 uh, for each student to address learning loss from COVID, mental health and well-being, and to help improve overall student performance. Right now, for context, the Department of Education currently allocates $79.62 per student of fair student funding for arts education. However, that money is considered no strings attached, which means essentially that a principal is able to spend that money however they would like, even if it's not arts related. Um, we need to make sure that the funding goes directly to supporting arts education, and we need to make sure it's adequate and sustainable to address the striking inequity in access to arts learning opportunities we are seeing across the five boroughs. 
Additionally, we believe the city should also devote 20% of the fiscal 2023 American Rescue Plan Act recovery, uh, academic recovery funding to expand arts-based instruction for all students, similar to this past year, as well as restore and baseline $24 million for art services, which were cut uh, when the pandemic first hit the New York City's economy. These uh, art services, while the first things cut, ultimately boost student achievement in and through the arts and are specifically targeting students who are those with disabilities, English language learners, and also uh, funding to support family engagement through arts ed. Now, for more information about any of these points, we invite you to visit our website, uh, which a member of our staff will paste in the chat momentarily, that tells you a bit more about our It Starts With The Arts campaign. So city council and mayor Adams, in your final budget, we believe you must boost city funding for arts education so that students can equitably recover and thrive socially, emotionally, and academically because it starts with the arts. So with that, um, let's see. Uh, I'm now gonna, uh, at the round table, we believe that it's imperative that we center our cities and people when talking about education, as they know better than anybody what's needed in our schools. So in that spirit, we're gonna invite up students first. We may have to pivot and, and bring along another city council member if scheduling uh, necessitates it. But these are, we're joined today by four incredible students, young artists who are gonna speak about their experience of arts education. So first I'm gonna call up to our, our virtual stage, if you will, Karen Raymond. Hello everybody, hi everyone. Um, I was a really shy kid. It was really hard to speak to an individual, let alone a crowd. I was so nervous, my hands were trembling. I was so sweaty. Um, it felt like it was 100 degrees, like I didn't have a voice. Until in my senior year at Claire Barton High School, as I was walking down the hallway and I saw a group of kids that were sitting by the door and they were filled with so much energy. And I, and I was like, you know, timidly and asked, um, what was this about? And then they were like, it's the theater. And they were like, you can come inside, you know, and check it out and feel like you could stay. And as I kept coming, I found my artistic home. You know, I found my voice there by developing it when I was going there time to time. And it was through this moment that I'm grateful that my school prioritized arts education. And I know this isn't true for everyone um, in your city as a student. And it is so important for young people to have a community of supporters around them. And I hope that you guys will support this campaign so that more students have access to arts education. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, show her some love in the chat, please. Um, I'm now uh, first also gonna acknowledge that we've also been joined by council member Gail Brewer. Thank you so much council member for joining us as well and for your support of Arts Ed. Um, from here, I'm gonna turn it over to hear from our students um, who are joining us from up in the Bronx. So Pascali, come on up, take our virtual stage. Um, hello, I'm Kay Daly. I go to Bronx Career College Preparatory High School, and today I'll talk about how the arts helped me sociably. When I was a kid, I started out here in New York when I came here from Puerto Rico. I was really shy, and I didn't know nobody there until one day I was introduced to theater. Theater helped me learn about a lot of things. I can be creative. I can be myself without nobody judging me. And I started being more open, but because of personal reasons, I had to leave. A few years later, uh, somebody told me to join opening act, an after school, an after school program that they had here. This program helped me learn about many things, like I can talk to people without stuttering. I can be myself without letting nobody judge me. And because of that, it helped me more outside of my social space. I'm now outgoing. I talk whenever I want to. And I can be myself around people 
without feeling judged. What kids need to learn nowadays is that many people go through immigration and it's really hard to adjust to a new place. Theater and the arts help you find your place in this world, whether you are not from this country or you're looking for a place to belong. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pascali. Um, I go to Bronx Latin High School. I'm a junior. And I have to say, I started acting when I was in middle school. And it was mainly for me to have a place to escape from reality. And for a while, I felt like I can be anything I want, anywhere I want, without thinking of like, you know, the world that we live in as of now. And then I stopped going and I came back really in um, last year during the pandemic. And I really needed the arts at that moment because there was like a lot going on in the world that I just couldn't like bottle up and anymore. So I looked towards arts of my writings and my acting to go to and just act like I'm not even in this world and I'm somewhere totally different. And I got to do that, and especially when we had Yes Fest. And for those who do, do not know, Opening Act has this event where it's called Yes Fest. And at the end of May, we have like all of our Opening Act students come together and perform their different portions of their scenes that they do. And we got to do that um, last year virtually. And it was, we got to go to a whole different place. We got to go to the afterworld. And it was so fun to play like as if I'm a spirit or something. And it was really, really fun. So I would say if by taking away this arts as it is, is already slowly getting taken away. So we want the budget because like it helps like students who've never got the opportunity to even act, have that chance to go somewhere they may not go like in you know, real life so yeah. <clears throat> hi i'm fatimata from bronx latin and i would like to talk about how opening acts helped me express myself when i was in elementary a lot of things happened to me and it was hard for me to express my emotions and i would just keep them bottled up but as acting as i was going through acting as i was portraying myself as new characters i had an opportunity to act and experience other emotions that I wasn't able to experience before because I'd always bottled them up. And what I'd like to say about how acting can help other people is that it can help them also express themselves in many ways that they didn't know they could express themselves. And by taking this away from us, you would take it away from the people that already love acting and help them so much. And you're also taking away the opportunity for others that have never tried acting before. And that's why me and Pascali and Higali are going to read you a poem. It starts with the arts. It starts with imagination. It starts with us, the next generation. It starts with imagination. It starts with creativity. It starts with us. It gives us an epiphany. It starts with creativity, something we crave for more. It gives us an epiphany that makes us want to soar. Something we crave for more, helping us express our unique personality that makes us want to soar, playing a fiction that transitioning to our true reality. Helping us express our unique personalities, it starts with us, playing in a fiction that transitions to our true reality. It, it starts, starts with, with the arts. arts. It, it starts, starts with, with the arts. arts. Oh my goodness. Show them some love in the chat. Thank you so much, Kay Daly, Pascali, Fatimata. Art truly is such an incredible messenger. We're so grateful you shared your art with us in this moment. Um, and I hope you're able to check out the chat as well. Um, now I'm going to turn things over uh, to our, our majority leader, Keith Powers, who also is a council member representing District 4. Thank you so much for joining us, Council Member Powers. Hi, everyone. I can't get my uh, camera on. Uh, I think it's disabled, but uh, oh, there we go. Uh, hey, hey, everyone. Nice to see you. And, and thanks to the students and everyone for being here today. I'm, I'm Councilmember Keith Powers. I'm the majority leader in city council. 
I'm also sitting in the office of Playbill right now because I'm about to go do something right outside on Broadway, uh, which is a totally uh, good alignment with what we're talking about today. Um, I'm glad to be joined here with uh, colleagues, Councilmember Chiose and Councilmember Gail Brewer. We also um, have had really strong support from the finance uh, chair, uh, Councilmember Justin Brandon, Councilmember Rita Joseph, and many others, because I think we all know and understand the value of arts education and music education in our city schools. And for many of us, and I am one of these uh, people, uh, arts and music really were the ways that I got tied into larger things that I uh, went on to, including becoming city councilor. There are ways that I got. Uh, an understanding of who I was as a person, but also what I cared about and really tied me to other larger social justice issues. But right now in the school uh, setting, arts is uh, mixed in with many other things, but we certainly wanna make sure that there's a guarantee that in every city school and every student is getting a sound and uh, guaranteed uh, arts education. And so that's what we're here for. And I'm really glad to announce here today that as part of the city council's response last week to the mayor, we included these asks in our response. So as we put out our statement of priorities for this upcoming budget in the next few months, this was one of our priorities. And so now I want you, everyone here to know the city council has taken a stance here that we think that this should be funded as part of this budget and that we are gonna be advocating for that in the next few months. So I'm really thankful to my colleagues and of course the speaker for making this a priority. We're hoping that the mayor will uh, pick this up as well. So I just wanna thank everyone at the Arts and Education Roundtable for your advocacy. It's something that I care about deeply, but it's something that will make all of our students' lives so much better if they get exposure to the arts and to music at an early age. And I do think that for many New Yorkers and for many young New Yorkers, it's a way, it's an expression of identity and it's a way for them to find their independence and find their voice where sometimes academics doesn't always um, prove to be that, that exact uh, way to do that. For some students, it's really finding their personality and their, their identity in that. So I think that's uh, even more of a reason why we need to make sure that this gets funded as part of this budget. And so I'm happy to be one of the council members who, who um, really fought to get this into our budget response. and. Uh, I am hopeful that in the next few months we'll all still stay together to fight for more funding for and guaranteed funding for arts uh, in our school setting. So with that, I'm actually headed out to uh, go out on to Times Square right now, to Broadway right now. So uh, thank you everyone for your work and thank you to my colleagues in the city council for being great advocates for the arts. And I, this is not, this is the kickoff. So don't forget that. We have a lot of work ahead of us in the next few months to actually get ourselves to the finish line. So thanks everyone for having me here today and thanks everyone for joining. Thank you so much, Council Member Powers, for your leadership, for your support of arts education. As you said, this is just act one of what is to come and we're so grateful to have your support at this time, truly. Thanks guys. Um, I'm now going to uh, bring up to our virtual stage um, Council Member Ose, who represents District 36 and is also the chair of the City Council Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations. Thank you so much for joining us, Council Member Ose. Well, thank you so much for having me, Kimberly, and, and hello everyone that's on this call, especially the students. Um, my name is, is Chi Ose, uh, again, the council member that represents the 36th district, which includes the neighborhoods of Bedford Stuyvesant and Northern Crown Heights. And I'm also honored to be the new chairman on the Committee of Cultural Affairs, Libraries and International Intergroup Relations. And this is an issue and budget priority that means so much to me. Um, especially as someone that grew up in New York City. Uh, I actually got to play Macbeth in fifth grade. And, and the fact that I was able to have that opportunity, uh, you know, really brought me uh, out of my shell. Um, I think I heard, uh, you know, someone previously state how, uh, you know, this, they, they used to be a shy person and uh, how the arts brought them um, into their own uh, selves. So that's something that that I really resonate with, especially with uh, my upbringing uh, growing up in, in New York City. Um, as Kimberly stated, you know, there's $79 and some change uh, that goes to uh, over a million of our public school students, and we need that to go to $100. And I'm 
amazed to see that I have many colleagues that share uh, many of the feelings that we have here on this call today. Um, and I know that as, as chair uh, on the Committee of Cultural Affairs, that this is something that isn't just uh, fun for students. This is something that will bring um, you know, our city back. Um, it's, it's mental health, it's um, you know, entertainment, it's uh, opportunities to engage in, in, in different types of works that um, may not be traditional uh, to the sense of you know, everyday New Yorkers, but are, are traditional to the sense of, of us um, that are a part of this cultural community. So um, I'm here to be a champion for arts and education for all. Uh, Kimberly uh, said it right at the start of this call. It, it does start with the arts. Um, and I know that to be true through, through my own experience. And I know uh, many of us in this call know that to be true as well. So I'm excited to continue pushing um, this priority uh, into the minds and head spaces of, of my colleagues in city government. Um, I know I'm not alone in this, which is, is really awesome, especially since we have our majority leader um, also being a, a big supporter of this as well. But um, again, it starts with the arts and uh, our future uh, is, is, is only going to excel in, in a more fabulous way if we are funding and prioritizing arts um, and education for, for all of our students. So um, you have an ally here. Thank you so much, Council Member Osei. And Daniel Craig, better watch out. First City Council, <laughs> next Macbeth on Broadway. Listen, listen, I, I don't know if um, I, I, I act that much anymore. I try to tell the truth as a politician, but um, I think the stage presence is a, is a bit of a, a skill I learned through, through arts and education. Oh, very much. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. That's, some students might become artists. Some may take those skills then apply them when being a government representative who's a leader of a community, they might be a doctor or a lawyer, those, sk still, those skills still uh, remain and help folks thrive work they're doing. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing. We're so great to have your support and advocacy and passion behind this critical issue. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to your colleague um, in City Council. Council Member Gail Brewer is also joined us, uh, who's with District 6, a longtime arts education advocate. And I know a friend to many of the organizations and educators on the call. So Council Member Brewer, I'll you. thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And the students are awesome. I think uh, we could just stop with them and then people would understand the importance of what we're doing. And I want to thank my colleagues. I think it is interesting, along with what uh, my colleagues have stated, that the president of Ukraine is an actor. And I believe that one of the reasons that he's doing so well and uh, kicking the butt of the Russians is because of his background. And that's an interesting, uh, as Kimberly said to go from um, acting to politics. It's an interesting uh, presence, but that's where you get your speaking ability is from being an actor. So he's, he's really, I mean, he's been on every national news network in the world, I don't know, for the last many months. And he has uh, shown the ability uh, to be a real leader. So. It's, it's something to watch. And I think it's wonderful that it's some of the uh, national television discussions about the arts. His name comes up all the time. So I think people should watch him and see that and see that that's another outlet for your amazing uh, arts education. So anyway, yes, I'm a huge fan of arts education. There's one thing I'd like to say um, in addition to how important they are is that in addition to funding, we need to measure because in the past, when I was in the city council before, um, there was something called the blue book. Um, it disappeared because much of the funding that went into the arts, which was supposed to be measured, went understandably into literacy or math or other kinds of test related um, opportunities that the students also have to overcome. So I'm saying we got to figure out how to measure it at the same time that we are making sure there's more funding because there's no question. Um, that uh, that the arts help with math, help with literacy, and help obviously with self-preservation uh, in today's world. So let's uh, continue. It is a pleasure to work with the speaker and my colleagues to put more money into arts education. Um, I also think one other aspect in addition to measuring, 
we have to work with the schools over the years and I will continue. I've had all the principals and all of the arts organizations come together on a regular basis because sometimes the principals don't know that these arts organizations are there in the community and could be helpful. Obviously in my area, Ballet Hispanico, Alvin Ailey, just to give you two dance companies work with local schools and um, then those students go on and hopefully uh, gain that amazing opportunity. I have to also say last summer when Mayor de Blasio had summer rising and the murals that were uh, done were extraordinary. Um, they were uh, something that, you know, I'm very picky about a mural. They were wonderful. So they're just, there are endless ways. And then just finally, as we're all working with the high school students or the middle school students in particular, I want to make sure that if the student wants to go on to uh, one of the, I would say, portfolio schools. I want to be sure that the schools have enough funding uh, for the teachers to be able to assist the students with that opportunity, because sometimes that isn't there. And I know there's lots of wonderful high school that focus on the arts, but you've got to have the funding for the teachers, uh, extra teachers if necessary, to put that um, uh, portfolio together. It's not easy. And if people need extra help to do so, then that money should be there to do that. So those are some of the things I'm thinking of. The city council, as you know, also has a role, as does the borough president, I happen to know both, um, in uh, deciding which organizations get funding um, for uh, those that are small. There's a whole panel discussion that takes place. So course organizations, make sure you apply for that. And then if there's want to partner, make sure we know about it. Thank you very much. Congratulations to the students and to the roundtable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Brewer. I could not have said it much better myself that it's accountability that is really key in measuring to make sure we know what students are, reach, are receiving arts education, to what degree are we meeting New York State standards, um, and also noting that uh, critical partnership that takes place between certified arts educators in partnership with the amazing arts and cultural community members that we have across the city, many of whom participated in those summer rising pop-up murals and performances you mentioned, which we hope to see back again this summer as well. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and for your advocacy uh, in support of arts education. Um, I'm now gonna turn it over um, to a longtime arts education champion and friend of the round table um, from the New York State Education Board of Regents. Uh, we are joined today by Regent Roger Tillis. Welcome, Roger. Hello, and uh, thank you for having this uh, wonderful um, uh, symposium for arts in the schools. Uh, thank you to the city council members who have expressed such support for it. The regents um, have been working for several years to promote the arts in the schools. We've seen over the many years, over the, I've been on the board for 18 years, uh, but at the beginning of that, we had more arts education than we do now uh, due to a number of factors, uh, uh, the emphasis on other aspects and testing and, um, and the ability to uh, demonize teachers in many ways, by having um, use of their, the student test scores to uh, try to uh, evaluate teachers, uh, we lost a lot of the arts and we are pushing to put it back into the agenda. I have been to many, many schools um, and let me give you quick stories. Uh, I've, I've been to many schools with uh, with artists who have come to do wonderful things from outside of the schools uh, in New York City. Um, and the kids get so excited, third, fourth, fifth grade kids. And then I stay after, after the artist leaves and ask the principal, well, what kind of follow-up do you have to this wonderful program where the kids are so excited about the arts? And the principal tells me, well, we don't have an arts teacher or a music teacher here in the schools. Uh, we have to concentrate on the testing uh, that we have. And uh, that's where we get evaluated. And that's there's a high stakes to it. And I said, do you realize that the arts uh, are, are the principal factor 
in doing better even on those tests, if that's all you you care about is those tests, then you don't have to have two periods of English, two periods of math, put the arts in and you would have higher scores even if that's your purpose. But there's more than, more than the higher test scores that we should be looking for in the arts. Um, we have, I have been to many schools where the, the only aspect of, of schools that kids want to come to school for are the arts, sometimes physical education, but, but the arts uh, really do a job in bringing kids to school. And if the arts aren't there, kids don't come to school. And when, if they're not in school, then they don't do well in school or they don't finish school. Um, so there are lots of educational reasons to have the arts, in addition to arts for art's sake, which really brings uh, a life to all the students and to all the people uh, by rounding their, their uh, educational uh, experience with experience for life. You say the arts start here, it ends, it doesn't end, it never ends. Um, and it, it goes on in people's lives, whether they go on to college or careers, uh, um, the arts are an important part. I know in my life, uh, the arts played a huge role in, in my being able to be an advocate, to be uh, elected to the Board of Regents and to other positions, and to be able to advocate for the arts in general. Um, without my third grade music teacher, uh, none of this would have happened for me. And hopefully it, it, my experience will help others as well. Um, this is great work. And I, I really appreciate the work that the Art Starts Here is doing and uh, wish you uh, the best of luck. Thank you so much, Regent Tillis. Um, only for your kind words and support of arts education, but really your, your work to center our students within their education. I could not agree more. Sequential arts education, whole child education, as opposed to one that's geared towards teaching towards a test. Um, and I'm sure there are many educators on our call today who can vouch that they've heard a student say, I came to school today because I knew I had music, or I came to school today because I knew that Arts Connection or Opening Act, or New York Bill or CUNY Creative Arts team was gonna be coming today. Um, so the uh, impact can oftentimes be so much, so more far reaching um, than what happens within that 45 minute class. So thank you so much for your words and for joining us. Um, I'm now gonna turn things over to um, Matthew Lee Erlbach from Be An Arts Hero. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Matthew. Thank you, Kim. Uh, good morning, and thank you, Majority Leader Keith Powers and New York City Council. I am so proud to be here with these amazing students and the New York City Arts and Education Roundtable. Uh, my name is Matthew Lee Erlbach, an actor, writer, teaching artist, and co-founder of Arts Workers United, Be an Arts Hero, who most recently secured the first ever congressional hearing on arts workers and the creative economy this past January. I've written for shows on Netflix and Showtime for WWE and Nickelodeon and premiered plays all over the country, including Steppenwolf in my hometown, Chicago, and of course, right here in our great city of New York. I did not get here by accident. I got here because of an incredible public school arts education. My visual art teacher, my music teacher, and my theater teacher were my heroes. They saw a kid with potential potentially going down a darker path. And they did what all great teachers do. They helped me see the world and myself in a new way. And they pulled me aside and taught me the power of my own voice, literally as a young opera singer and instinctually as a human being. But more importantly, they taught me to listen to myself, to the room and to the community like any good member of an ensemble. What was clear then and only gets more clear the older I get is that my arts education was not extracurricular, nor was it luxury. It was central to my learning. It improved my academic outcomes, just like it does for so many New York City students. But beyond the practical application of core subjects, integrating the arts provides something even more essential, an emotional and civic education. 
post-pandemic, I can think of nothing more important at this critical moment than to invest robustly in the arts for our students, for their own well-being and the well-being of our city. This is why we're urging the city to guarantee $100 per student for arts education to help students equitably recover and thrive socially, intellectually, and emotionally. We are talking about our children today and the future of our city tomorrow. The stakes could not be higher. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Matthew, for your time, your words. We could not, you could not be more right. The time is now. Um, I'm now gonna turn things over to Chesrae Dolfa from the Broadway Advocacy Coalition. Welcome and thank you for being with us, Chesrae. Um, thank you, Kim. Um, good morning, beautiful folks. Um, hello to all the city council folks that's here, to all the um, arts roundtable folks, and to the beautiful students that were so eloquent um, and graceful in um, advocating for more um, arts funding. Um, so I'm Chesre Dalfa. I'm the artistic director for the Broadway Advocacy Coalition, and I'm also the resident director on the Tina Turner Musical on Broadway. And yeah, let me just say this. Let me start here, okay? When I first walked into a theater room, I was in high school and I grew up in a really poor neighborhood and no one in my family were known as artists or even referred to themselves as an artist. And um, the first time when I really felt seen and affirmed and felt like I belonged was in my first theater class in high school. And I remember when I saw the people in the room with me, the other artists in the room with me, the other students, I remember feeling like I belong. And right now we are in a place um, in America, in the world where we don't just wanna be included, right? It's not just DEI, we wanna belong. We wanna feel like we belong. And the arts is such a big um, indicator of, um, of belonging and feeling like you're part of your tribe. And um, when I say to y'all on this call today that that theater class ended up changing the entire trajectory of my life, then I actually mean that. I come from community theater, I'm an immigrant, and my parents didn't finish high school, and I'm directing on Broadway now. And although Broadway is not the pinnacle of creativity, for someone coming from community theater as an immigrant and being on Broadway now, for me it's evident that when our city council people do what they do and the teachers do what they're supposed to do and the principals do what they're supposed to do, then people like me have real pathways to change our lives. And because I am able now to have a livelihood where I can really afford to love, I can pay for my cousins in South Africa to go to school. I can support friends who are struggling because I was able to use theater as a real grounding force in my life. My whole community benefit from my artistry now. My family benefits from my artistry. My young cousins who's four and five and six, they hear the Auntie Chesre talk about being a director, talking about blocking, talking about artists and ensemble members. They hear the language of an artist in the room. They hear the language of an artist in the kitchen. And in that, we are transforming our communities. Because let me tell you all this, Broadway needs more black and brown people on that stage for producers, stage managers. So all of these beautiful young people that spoke today, Broadway literally needs your creativity. We need your voice in the room. We need your advocacy. We need all of the melanin that you have, right? Because that industry itself needs to be changed. And it's changed by us making pathways for young people. To all the council members that's here, y'all know I'm very passionate about this. When they say no to the $100 for our students, what do we do? How do we fight? How do we advocate? How do we make sure that their no is not a no? And that when they give us that no, that we're coming back even harder, even stronger, with even more advocacy, because we understand that arts change lives. It literally changed lives. And because of that, um, we cannot just, it's not business as usual. Matter of fact, it's business as unusual. And that's the word on today. Thank you to the Arts Roundtable for having me, y'all. Um, and I just want to say that let's continue loving and supporting all of these amazing young, all, all of these amazing young artists because we know um, 
that they need our support. They need our eyes, our voices, because let me tell us all the young people that's here, we rock with you and we are in your corner. And when we have to move up the city council with posters and banners and shouting and screaming, we're going to do it. We're going to pull up. Okay. Um, so if you agree with me, please say amen and ashe in the chat. And um, yeah, thank you, y'all. Oh my goodness, Chesre. Thank you so much. I hope you see the love that's coming through in the chat. Truly, arts changes lives, period, full stop. Thank you so much for bringing your words, your story, your vibrancy and love the arts and arts education to this space and the inspiration that I know I am drawing and standing right next to you, Chesre, at City Hall with those signs when the weather's a little nicer. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. And then last but not least, um, I'm now going to turn things over to a dear friend. He is the co-chair of the New York City Arts and Education Roundtable Board. He's also the director of education and community engagement at the New York Philharmonic. I'm going to welcome Gary Padmore to our virtual stage to be our last speaker for today. Good morning, folks. I don't know how I'm going to follow Chesare. I'm like, I, I don't know what to say. That was a total um, mic drop moment. So props to you, Chesare. Um, and um, just a, a huge shout out again to the youth that spoke earlier on. Thank you for teaching us. Um, so as Kim mentioned, uh, my name is Gary. I'm the director of, of the um, director of education at the New York Philharmonic and also happen to have the, the pleasure and honor of being the uh, co-chair of the Board of the Arts and Education Roundtable. So just speaking from my own experience, um, when I was in middle school, um, I grew up, you know, Williamsburg Projects, and I literally had to walk 10 blocks past my, the middle school across the street to go to the middle school um, that was almost a mile away from my home because I, my family recognized that the school that was nearby did not have a full, um, you know, educational experience. And so that partly had to do with the arts. And so I was fortunate to be able to start playing trumpet when I was in sixth grade at IS318. And then fast forwarding, when I went to high school at Talent Unlimited, I then went on and had an opportunity to be a, a part of um, the an internship program working at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And that's what really led me to being where I am, You know, being able to work with three orchestras in New York City, being able to work with Midori and friends. But I also acknowledge that the systems that I was involved with, that I had friends and folks that I grew up with that were not you know, able to, to participate in the same experiences. And, and in, in my opinion, that is an outcome of the systemic racism that, that plagues our educational system. So when we talk about equity, when we talk about our communities, we have to look and see how holistically we are providing these resources to all of our young people. So just kind of looking at my own experience, so all the folks that I worked with um, and, and all of my peers in school, many of them went on to, you know, and to pursue careers in social services. Art, um, sports management, education. Um, some folks started their own business. I mean, th it runs the gamut of the, the, the experiences that I believe started with the arts. And so when I also think about the arts, I think about the fact that it wasn't just for me to be able to leave my block, to leave my community. It actually was to equip me to help build up the, the folks that were in my community. So in doing the work that I'm doing now at, at, the, at the New York Philharmonic, I'm able to work with IS318, my old uh, middle school, or PS250, my old elementary school, or Grand Street Campus, that's two blocks from my, from my neighborhood, because that's where the value starts, is when we actually can use utilize the resources that we've been able to get from the arts and other areas of education to help build up the, the folks that, that, that helped us you know, along the way. And so for me, as, as I said, it started with the arts. And so, I, I, and I think that using what we have really will address the, the inequities that exist in our community. And so, I co-sign what every, every person said here. The $100 is nothing, is a drop in a bucket as it relates to the larger um, budget that's happening in the city. So I do hope that as we think about education, as we think about you know, looking holistically at a, as, at, a, at a young person, from wellness to creativity, to socialization, et cetera, that we consider the arts being a priority in that work. So thank you all for allowing me to be able to speak. Thank you so much, Gary, and please share some love in the chat. Um, we're so grateful to have you here, to have your leadership at the round table, um, and to have you close out uh, our speakers, our passionate arts education champions today. Um, Becky, I'll toss it to you. Yes, um, hi, and so for any press, we're just gonna take questions from press right now. 
So for any press that's on the call, um, we can unmute you. If you have a question, I'm also going to put my phone number and email in the chat. So for any press, if you don't have any questions right now, feel free to reach out to me um, as well. But message me if you'd like to speak. We'll, we'll give folks a second. I think we have done a very clear and thorough job that there might not be any questions. So Kim, I will send it over your way to close. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Becky. And thank you all for joining us. A special thank you to all of our incredible speakers today, Karen, Pascali, Kate Daly, Fatimata, Council Member Powers, Council Member Ose, Council Member Brewer, Regent Tillis, uh, Matthew Lee Erlbach, Cesare Dalfa, and of course, Gary Padmore. A special thank you as well to the roundtable staff that are on our call, Kinsey Keck, Alex Latore, and also Monisha Bayana. Um, the next step is our campaign is launched. We encourage you to visit our campaign website for more information about how you can get involved. We have a social media toolkit and we encourage you to be posting alongside of us, contacting your city council representatives, letting them know that this is an important issue to you um, and helping us keep the drumbeat. We also have information on what are we asking for? What's the current state of arts education? Um, and as always, you can always reach out to the round table. We'll put my contact information in the chat. Um, and last but not least, thank you to all of our incredible audience, our arts educators, teaching artists, arts administrators for being here. We are so grateful and feel the love just radiating from this chat. Wonderful. I see my email in the chat. Um, I think I will call it a day then. Thanks so much, folks. And we hope to see you real soon at the round table. Have a nice day.